Pedro from me and BRX. I'm here today with Jack of Exodus to talk about Persona Non Grata out November 19th on Nuclear Blast. How's it going? Good. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Are, are you guys excited for this release? I mean, seven years? You you made yeah. us wait for seven years? Yeah, we sure did. <laughs> it was kind of Slayer. you guys. It was, it, it was kind of Slayer's fault because we were we were waiting for Gary to to get back before we put something out, you know. Um but it was worth the wait, you know. I mean, it was uh, his his deal with Slayer was awesome, you know, and he deserved every second of that. And you know, they're the greatest. So, uh, you know, so uh, it was worth it was worth waiting. And the album's really good. Like he he really he really outdid himself with the writing this time. I think you know, and, and that's kind of where I want to start off because I've had a chance to listen to the record. I'm perhaps one of the few the few that have had a chance to listen to this album. And you guys sound as hungry on this record as the band did back in 1985. Has, has these seven years kind of built a spark in you that, that this album now allows you to just bring it all out and, and, and give the fans that energy, that raw energy of Exodus? Yeah, I mean, I think so, because like, uh, you know, I mean, we were carrying on, you know, a little bit like it was almost like there was two camps. Gary was out doing his thing and we had Craig in and we were doing, you know, we were doing our thing and keeping it, you know, from disappearing off of the, off of the, you know, radar. But then, uh, you know, then once, once everybody was back together, you know, in the studio, you know, it was like, it's like, you know, the, like the band's back together, you know what I mean? And, and so there was like a bunch of just chemistry of that we hadn't, we hadn't had in a while because Gary hadn't, you know, been there and he's the, he's the captain of the team, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, just getting him back in and being in the studio and having it been that long, it was like, we were all a little, a little extra excited, I think. A little you know? giddy. Yeah. And then he had riffs that he'd been saving up for the whole time, you know what I mean? And, uh, and it just turned out, turned out really good, man. I, I really like it. How long did this album uh, take in order to, from the starting point to get to where it is now? Did, did you guys go into the studio and start working it while in the studio? Or when you went into the studio, you guys already had a little bit of a framework of what this album was going to be like? Yeah, Tom and Gary had got together for uh, like off and on, like off and on for a month and then hard for a month. Uh, just to him and just half stack and drums in a room writing um and then uh so they had most of it like most of it was songs by the time we all got up there and then gary always comes up with a couple barn burners while we're recording uh you know he'll just come in and go i made this last night and it's like the last song on the album you know it's the the fastest bestest one you know yeah and uh you know gary always does it like that like it's just a few months of a process like it's a couple months of writing and then a couple months of, you know, like a month and a little bit more of, of recording. And then it's done, man. Like Gary's the man. When it's time to work, he just sits down and makes an album, man. He's, he's, he's great, you know. So, so when fans get to listen to Persona Non Grata, this is a fresh record, not a record that Exodus kind of had in their back pocket for a long period of time. Yeah, no, no, not at all. I mean, I, <clears throat> you know, there's riffs that I had heard Gary, you know, jamming it you know, stuff like that, but it never turns into a song until he sits down and the words all come together and the riffs all come together and he just deals out, you know, he deals out these songs, man. He does it every time. It's like, he's a, he's, you know, he's the man. He's truly like an inspired guy. You know what I mean? He goes in and just whips, whips out a record. And it's every time, you know, it's, it's cool. It's a, it's a little bit different. It's not just bringing old, stuff and rehashing it like he he keeps his ear to what's new and uh there's always something new in there you know what i mean like he's it's 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 cool so it's good to have him back and you know good to good be to, yeah man yeah yeah uh, when you guys got into the studio did you feel like there was a little bit of rust considering that's been a long time since you guys have all been together in the studio or i mean you guys are seasoned pros did you just go at it well i mean <clears throat> as far as like I mean, yeah, I, I felt rusty. Uh, like I felt rusty because we went in uh, almost a year ago from right now is when we, we went in and uh, at the end of August last year to, to record. So we recorded it in like September, October last year. 
and it's been sitting in the can since then just because of the the all the weird shit that was going on we didn't want to we didn't want to release it so um but even at that point you know i hadn't played my bass for four months or something like that and and you know and then i got in there in the studio and uh yeah i like it, it for a long like i wasn't happy with what how i was uh you know performing you know like everybody else was like oh it sounds good and then i'm like no man i'm not like i'm not I'm not nailing it, you know, like I should, like there's another level, you know, that I know. And uh, um, it all turned out good though. I mean, you know, it just took a little bit of time to like, you know, kick the rust off and stuff, but uh, you know, it was, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there definitely was a little bit of, of little that. Bit of uh, yeah. what, what do you feel sets this album apart from the previous records that you've been involved with? I don't know, man. I mean, just, not not a lot really i mean it's just like it's the it's the one that, that we're doing now i mean we kind of you know i mean we kind of do things i wouldn't say it, it's the same but you know it's 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 the same kind of uh you know mood and momentum on, on all the records we, we go in gary's got the stuff and then and i have a job to do you know what i mean i think like the last record i engineered uh everything but the but the drums on it so I was in the studio every day you know on the last one and that was kind of uh it was a little bit of extra taxing on me um like by the time the album was done I was like Ugh, you know <laughs> everybody else got to go home and I would just start the next guy and so uh you know so this time it was a little bit more relaxed like we were up in the mountains and I had a little more free time to to you know just relax about it you know. One of the incredible things about this album when I was listening to it is that it feels super compact. It's like it's super balanced from top to bottom. It's a record that uh, what you get at the beginning is exactly what you're going to get all the way through to the end. Is that a result of the sound that the album has or do you feel that's a result in terms of track listing and the overall structure that you guys created for this album? Oh, I mean, I think like I think it takes music to to carry you through all of that not not just production you know what I mean um like these songs you're, you're right they're kind of uh concise and uh you know like each one's to the point each one has its own little you know sound and and uh and message and uh and that's just Gary man like it's just you know he he just comes in with you know with that stuff ready it's it's already there it's just written I just have to you just have I to just, play it. But I just have to put my little bit of icing on the cake and, you know, and then and then we're done. You know what I mean? It, it, two songs I have to ask you about because the album had that feeling of being very cohesive all the way through. But there's two tracks that kind of self themselves apart. And that is Cosa del Pantano and then Lunatic Liar Lord. The combination mm -hmm. of these two songs, because they have some elements that we didn't really hear before and we don't hear them after. Now, mm -hmm. a couple of questions about these two tracks. Was it from the beginning the idea to have them as two separate tracks? Because when you listen to the album from beginning to end, they kind of feel like one. Like one is the interlude of the other, almost like it, the interlude of the other. It is. I think they, we just split the track so that, uh, you know, you could get right to business after, you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's a pretty long intro. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a very... And he goes through it, you know, three or four times, and and it's like if, you, if you put them together, it, it almost almost reaches the ten minute mark, and maybe yeah. for, for streaming services, that would be a little bit too long of an interlude to actually get to the music. yeah, yeah, because I think you know on the radio we don't need all the flies buzzing around and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> that's on the beginning, you know, um, you know, so so I think I mean they're made to be played as one thing, but yeah, it's I think it's just so that the the intro could be left off for, you know, track listing type type stuff. Yeah, it just felt to me that like if you if you listen to them separately uh, in outside of the context of the record, it's going to be one thing. I mean, you can enjoy uh, Lunatic Liar Lord as its own track because it gets right. right into that meat and bones of the song. But right. when you're listening to the album, you really need to have them together because it really feels yeah. like one kind of uh, one yeah. sets the table. It's like uh, it really sets the table for what the next track brings. In yeah, yeah. I think. You know, I think that was kind of like, like people have always, you know, asked us to do another uh, Cajun Hell, 
you know, like every time we're down in the South, people are like Cajun hell, man. And I think this is kind of Gary's follow up to that idea. Like it's pretty swampy, you know, like yes, the, yes, yes. the guitar part, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty Delta swampy stuff. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So. I, I, I got that same vibe too, from that acoustic guitar sound specifically from Cosa del Pantone it has that, that, that swamp, that, that yeah. Southern flavor to it. That then yeah. migrates into the other track so nicely. Yeah. So I, I really it, like it. Is, it is a weird tuning. The, the acoustic part, like he tuned it so whacked out, man. I mean, I, you know, I do country music and stuff, and we do all kinds of altered tuning and stuff, and I'd never heard the tuning he used on that. You know, <laughs> it, it's way out there, man, but it's cool. <laughs> you know, sounds really cool. So I, I want to talk a little bit about your bass playing on this record because I thought it was outstanding. I, I, I love the, the tone that the bass has. And I love what the bass and the drums are doing together on this record. I really felt like you guys created the backbone. You guys created the, the foundation of the album that allows the guitars to be as dynamic as they are going mm. in different directions. Did, did you come in with a game plan on what you wanted from the bass for this album? Or was something that kind of evolved when you, when you saw the tracks coming to life? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, 90% of what I do is just what Gary tells me to do. You know, I, I, I used to come in and watch him play and I'd like learn stuff and, you know, and I'd be spending all this time, <clears throat> you know, I'd get in the studio and Gary'd go, no, I just kind of want it like this. So now once the song is done, I take a bass, I hand it to Gary, I turn my phone on and I go play the song and he plays it on bass. And then that's 90% of what I'm going to do, you know, um, and, you know, it's just this one. Turned. I mean, Gary's always been a real di cool, like dynamic bass player. If you listen to some of the, like the first couple albums he played bass on and there's some really cool, like subtle, uh, it's not stuff, but it's like, I stay on the E on this part while they play the riff, you know? And if I try to like follow them on the riff, it, it's not the same thing. It's real subtle uh, bass work. You know what I mean? So, I mean, a lot of it's Gary's ideas, you know what I mean? Um, I throw in a few little Billy Sheehan fucking tricks, you know what I mean? Here, here, but, but a lot of it is, it's, it's Gary's idea. Like there's a lot of time where I'm trying to do something and he just says, no, just ride the E over that part, you know? And then I'm like, oh, and then I do it. And it's totally, he's right. Like it sounds, you know, better, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it's Gary's idea of how the guitar goes over stuff, you know. Yeah, how it all blends together. But uh, speaking of your bass and, and slipping into madness, you, your, your bass on that song is outstanding. And there's a little bit of a flourish that you bring it into the forefront that really jumps ahead of everybody else. And you, you, you really get to feel the bass. And from that point on, it kind of gets tattooed in your brain as a listener. Because as right. the song progresses, it starts to become more of a layer of the track. But because mm -hmm. we can a strong taste of it, it it's it, we could still hear it as we progress through the song. Right. Uh, how did that work for you? Because I, I thought that was outstanding bass work on that track. Yeah, I mean, I thank you, by the way. I just uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of right. You know, you uh, you know, with bass, it's there's a there's a fine dance that you're playing because you want to be heard, but you don't you don't want to be heard too much, you know, then you're over, like you have a role to play, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're in, in Primus or if you're Billy Sheehan, like they've carved their own place out for that, but this is, you know, metal and it, it has to, it's gotta be under the guitar. It's gotta bind the drums to the guitar and, and all that. And so it's kind of a fine, a fine dance, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, sometimes I, Sometimes you follow exactly what's on. Sometimes you do little tricks like that to bait their ear into, into it. And then you, then you're listening to the bass a little more, you know, like to me, one of the ultimate metal bass performances was among the living was, was Frankie on, on among the living. It had that where you could hear it under the guitar and added a, a, a layer of dimension every so often you'd hear him go win, 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 and you'd go oh that's the bass and it's killer you know what i mean and like that's where it should be like every so often they should go oh that was the bass it was killer you know what i mean and then back to the guitar you know <laughs> yeah so. I, I i honestly i honestly felt like you did that on this record because 
it's to me it's one of the highlights i, I hate when i listen to an album and it's hard for me to spot where the bass is because it's yeah. so drawn out by everything else but i felt on this record was so subtle the the bass work was so subtle but at the same time was was there for you to enjoy it so i, I really appreciate your your work on this record with the bass because I, I really like it cool man i, I appreciate that because that's that's what i'm going for you know what i mean was there a song on this album that gave you guys a little bit of a hard time uh, that, that maybe you even thought about scrapping it because it was just, you know, you guys were getting too many gray hairs over it. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, actually that was a song that didn't make it. It was, it was, it was, it was originally, it was, it was clickbait. It was called clickbait. We played it, we played it. It just kind of this one part wasn't working. And then Gary just said, yeah. And he came in the next day and went, now I got a new song and this is clickbait now. And uh and and I love the I clickbait might be my favorite album on uh, song on the album. It's it's very straightforward and very uh uh it's, it's, just, it's just a straightforward thrash tune, you, you know what I mean? And uh, but I, I really like it. Like it ends up being like the one that I I listen to a lot. So uh uh so yeah, I mean there's always stuff that you know doesn't make it or riffs that they're not quite hitting once we're in the studio and it's like yeah that's bad you know gary's like that it doesn't it's not how i want it to hit and he'll go and he'll change uh well on um on fires of division he he changed the key uh, in like come like leading right up to the recording he's like i don't like it and then he changed the key to what it is now and then he liked like to change the position of the part and and then it worked out and then it then it worked you know so i mean that that kind of stuff happens all the time yeah one last question for you and that is as you look back at the process of creating this album what do you feel was the most gratifying aspect of putting this record together for yourself as a musician oh man it was uh i mean it was just like doing something good after so long like like after you know being apart for so long and and all this stuff and you know and all the things that were going on in the in the world and you know all that negativity and and then we we just went up there and we all did our jobs like we're supposed to do you know and uh <clears throat> it just came together and and it turned out you know we did something good in the middle of all that you know confusion and and all that stuff so it was just good to know that like we're still like we're still the boys, you know what I mean? Like we get together and we still do what we do, you know what I mean? Exodus is back. Yeah. With a vengeance. <laughs> I, I love the record. You guys did a phenomenal job. Uh, you made us wait for seven years, but if, if you're going to make us wait and deliver an album like this, you know, like I can't really complain. Yeah, uh, the, next one won't be, the next one won't be seven years. I'm yeah. and, and, and it will be as good as this one. This is a phenomenal record. Uh, I, I love how punchy it is, how compact it is. You guys don't pull back. It's just like in your face metal uh, from start all the way to the finish. Uh, congratulations on the album. Uh, best of luck with the release. And, uh, and I'll see you on the road at some point in time. All right, my man. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Yeah, thank you.